Hello, this is Janice and Rob, and we are the museum's team at Sewerby Hall. This is a significant anniversary, marking the end of World War II. And so we've made this short film to celebrate, commemorate, and communicate some of the decisive events of the war years. And some special people of the town of Bridlington. We're going to take you on a tour. Foley's Cafe had been founded in 1902 by George Foley, who had at one time been the butler here at Sewerby Hall working for the Lloyd Grahams. It was destroyed by a single high explosive bomb on the afternoon of the 23rd of August 1940. Five people had taken shelter in the basement of the cafe. Three were killed instantly. They were Evelyn Parkin, aged 39, the adopted daughter of George Foley and the cafe manageress. Betty Spear, aged 18, James William Watson, aged 40, and his wife, Dorothy Grace Watson, aged 44. She was pulled from the wreckage after five hours of digging, but died later in hospital. There was only one survivor, Walter Parkin, Evelyn's husband, who in happier times had been the manager of the ice cream department. It had taken five hours to tunnel through the wreckage to the cellar of Foley's Cafe. The rescuers had continued despite the danger of more air raids and a damaged wall that threatened to fall on them. The leader of the rescue party had been ARP warden Tom Alderson. The rescue at Foley's Cafe was the third such daring rescue that Alderson had done in the space of a week. First rescuing a woman from bombed houses in St Albans Road and then leading the team in saving 11 people from the cellar of the Britannia Hotel. Each time he had bravely tunnelled through wreckage to get to the casualties. For his actions, he was awarded the first ever George Cross by the King. Tom also received a gallantry medal from the RSPCA for rescuing two horses from a burning stable during an air raid. Tom was actually quite a modest man, and he always insisted that his George Cross was actually an award for all the rescue parties in Bridlington. Here in the heart of Bridlington's once bustling commercial district is the site of the oldest established hotel in town. The Britannia Hotel was originally an 18th century manor house for the Bower family, later on becoming the Ship Inn and onto which they added the assembly rooms which is a, the place for polite people to be and be seen. Britannia in 1812, at the height of the Napoleonic Wars, the hotel was the premier place for genteel people to stay. The back of the hotel faced south and had commanding views of the busy harbour and beautiful Bridlington Bay beyond. Then, on the 21st of August 1940, the Britannia took a direct hit from one of 20 high explosive bombs. The damage to the hotel was extensive and eventually the site was cleared in its entirety um, with this row of shops built as a redevelopment and apartments behind facing the harbour. This row of shops and cafes is called the Lawrence Complex. It stands on the site of number 21 Air Sea Rescue Workshops which continued in use until 1978. The Lawrence Complex is so called after its famous namesake, T.E. Shaw, better known as Lawrence of Arabia. Arriving in Bridlington in 1932, Lawrence took the name of Shaw in an effort to hide his real identity. In the 1930s, these buildings were home to RAF 1104 Marine Craft Unit, within which Lawrence trained the crews of the armoured target boats. This photograph shows Lawrence on his bicycle in the yard of the Britannia Hotel, but he actually lodged over the road from here at the Ozone Hotel, now of course the Royal Yorkshire Yacht Club. Lawrence helped design the armoured target boats which served as marine target practice for the bombers flying out of RAF Catfoss and Cowden. Once World War II was underway, as well as target practice, these craft were actively involved in air-sea rescue. This is the new town hall. It was designed by the corporation's engineer, Peter Newton, in a Neo-William and Mary style, and built in 1932. 
Alderman Henry Harker laid the foundation stone on the 24th of February 1931. The Town Hall represents the expansion of the corporation and a rise in its stature during the 30s as they began to manage more and more of Bridlington's affairs. The building is 15 bays wide with a central three bays surmounted by a pediment on four columns. The Mayor's office was located directly above the front door. During the war, the corporation held their war cabinet meetings in the building as they managed the aftermath of the worst bombing on the East Coast. Before the new building, the corporation operated from a house known as White Lodge. This was a private house built in the 1830s for the Lamplew family. Bridlington Cemetery is the final resting place for 41 servicemen from the Second World War. The first to be buried was William Arthur Gilmore. He was killed when his ship, HMS James Ludford, struck a mine off the Northumbrian coast on the night of the 12th to the 13th of December 1939. He'd been born in Bridlington and his body was returned here for burial. The last war casualty to be buried here is Robert Kempley Hawkins. Robert died in the Lloyd Hospital on the 26th of December 1946, over a year after the end of the war. But it was not just service casualties that lie buried in Bridlington Cemetery. The blitzing of Bridlington in 1940 and 41 was indiscriminate, and those civilians who lost their lives to the bombing are also buried here. The eldest is 80-year-old Annie Maria Anderson. Annie had come to Bridlington from York in the early 1900s. She died when 5 Lamplew Road was destroyed by a parachute mine on the, 9th, the 18th of June 1941. Six other people were killed in the blast in Lamplew Road, including 60-year-old Thomas Foster, who also lived at number 5. David Anthony Gray was the youngest casualty of the Blitz. He was just two years old when he was killed on the night of the 10th of April 1941. His grief-stricken mother was too distraught to attend his funeral. In total, 23 of the 27 Bridlington casualties are buried in Bridlington Cemetery. Siobe Pillbox was part of the defences of Bridlington that were built in 1940 to 1941. Had you stood at the pillbox at that time and looked down at the beach, a little over a mile and a half away, you would have seen a whole collection of obstacles and beach defences designed to prevent the landing of a German force on the coast. The coastal defences were designed to delay and obstruct any attempted landing. Although this pillbox could have brought rifle fire to bear on the beach, the sands are at the very maximum range of the soldiers' rifles and bullets fired from here would have lacked accuracy and power by the time they reached the beach. This pillbox was actually for a second line of defence, beyond the beach, that was designed to stop the enemy from breaking out. Manned by regular troops, not home guard, it would have brought gunfire to bear on any enemy emerging from the tree line. The aim was to hold the Germans back long enough for reinforcements to arrive. The threat of invasion passed after 1941, and by 1944 the defences were decommissioned, and by 1945, Bridlington Beach had been cleared and was open for holidaymakers once again. This pillbox is one of the few survivors in Bridlington, though extensive remains of concrete beach defences survive beyond South Beach at Auburn Sands. Surabee Hall was built for the Graham family. Um, the house actually encapsulates five very distinct building phases, but the central core was Georgian, built between 1714 and 1720. But to cut a long story short, by the time we get to World War II, the family have left, the goods and objects in the house, including the paintings, were all sold in a six-day auction, and the house was requisitioned by the military. In 1941, it became a hospital for RAF personnel. Um, but kitted out enough to do um, blood transfusions and small-time operations on members of the civilian public. <laughs>